Thank you to ma'am, that was a beautiful illustration of uh, the procedure. Your window was open though, did you realize that the window yeah. in the office was open, the cars were uh, parking? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a stained Thank window. God you're on the third floor, right? It's Otherwise, a window. people outside they cannot see. Oh, you're right, yes. All right, so let's say you have a patient with venous insufficiency and uh, the insufficiency is in the great softness vein. But also it's in the tributaries of the softness vein because you know the softness vein give branches. It never stays just in the softness vein. So you do the ultrasound, you diagnose both, and the mam ablates the softness vein. Well, some of the tributaries that you see on the skin will go away, but most of them will not, especially the larger one, more than five millimeter. So what do you do with that? The patient will come back saying, oh my God, what did you do? You made me go through this procedure with the window open and people watching and, and the veins are still there. What do I do? And uh, I say, well, let's do what we call sclerotherapy. Or you can do microflebectomy. Depends on how big the vein is. Microflebectomy is stab wound phlebectomy where you take pieces of that vein out and it's all done in the office. Okay, his procedure was done, patient is fully awake in the office, no general anesthesia, no IV. And patient walk out of the office instantly. So the next presentation, I'm gonna show you briefly what sclerotherapy is all about. The two most common agents in the US, and actually the world, right now are polydacanol and sotradacol. Polydacanol is a fatty alcohol, has alcohol in it. It's basically local anesthetic. That's how it was invented in the 50s. It has much less pain, even if it leaks in the tissue, and causes less pigmentations than STS, the sotradecol, the second one. Okay, the sotradecol is much more powerful. It's actually the most powerful agent. If you want a vein to go away, inject them with sotradecol, the STS. Okay, it's a long uh, chain fatty acid. It's actually a soap, made like soap. That's what you're injecting, soap, okay? And um, the problem with it, when you have powerful medicine, you cause more problem, uh, more problem if you are not doing it the right way. So if you go too high in the concentration, you'll have skin necrosis if you leak in the tissue, and you cause ulcer, and the ulcer is not pretty. The patient will be very unhappy. Okay, and you have more pigmentations on the skin after you do it. So how do we do injections? Well, it all depends on the vein you're injecting. So let's start with the simplest, the telangiectasias, which is what we call spiders, okay? You use 32 gauge needle, okay? This is very tiny, tiny needle, patient barely feel it. And the concentration is very low, 0.2% uh, polydacanol or 0.1 STS. And when you inject, you inject it till you see the vein blushing away or you see blip in the skin, which means the vein ruptured and don't inject. So I'm going to show you brief videos about each scenario, okay? We have a patient here who has uh, what looks like telangi ectasias separated by venal ectasias. The blue ones are venal ectasias, the red ones are telangi ectasias. You can see the blue ones are slightly larger. And frequently you will realize that they are very connected. So I'm going to inject them with 0.35% foam polydecanol mixed uh, in this uh, three-way stop cock. We just put it like that and we mix it like this, becomes white and milky. Then we choose the largest vein and we inject it and see how the foam spread. So we go in the vein, we make sure we got blood in the needle hub here before we inject. You don't want to inject, we see no blood. And we're injecting, and you can see it spreading to cover a lot bigger area than you anticipate. That's because they're connected. You can see it spreading slowly. And I'm injecting very slowly. You don't want to rush it because you rupture the vein. And you may create an ulcer if you inject under the skin. We did several injections for this gentleman here a minute ago, but you can see how the area has cleared, became free of veins instantly. In a few minutes, you will see some veins coming back and they'll be very red. That's because of the inflammation and irritation. And we can keep going and injecting all those other veins around it. But that's a great example of how uh, uh, cyclotherapy using foam is very efficient and very effective 
Actually, I like it more than liquid sclerotherapy for uh, areas like this because it spreads more and the success rate with it uh, is more than liquid uh, sclerotherapy with the same medicine, polydacanol. Thank you. Okay, so you can see here that, um, you know, you can uh, cover a lot of areas with one injection. I mean, that ankle probably take me three, four, and it's done. You see the veins getting red, okay, because they're inflamed, but the is irritated, the intima, it destroys the intima, okay, expose the collagen underneath the intima, that causes fibrosis. The fibrosis closes the vein. That's how sclerotherapy works, or chemical ablation. And that's true for small veins or big veins. Uh, so, can you play that, please? This is another... So, this is... You know what, let's skip, let's skip this video, it's the same thing. Can you skip the video? Yeah. So now reticular veins, which are a little bit bigger veins, they are like a green flat veins, about two to four millimeter. So you go a little bit higher on the concentration. I put here concentration recommended, but in reality I use like 0.4% on this, okay? You wanna give them a more powerful medicine. And uh, next, uh, please. You know, we always worry about Treating the medical veins first, and then the cosmetic ones second. And let's admit it, we all care about our appearance, we want to look good. So you can see this spider going away. You will still see the branches, that they are very red and angry right now. Uh, with time the body absorbs them. And this whole thing took maybe five minutes or so. And then finally the large varicose veins, the ones that are bulging. That's what people uh, come to us most commonly for. Uh, those are the tributaries I was talking about from usually great softness vein or short softness vein. Sometimes they come in the lateral thigh from uh, lateral, lateral subdermic plexus of Albanese. This is congenital network of veins that uh, becomes uh, insufficient sometimes and give you varicosities in lateral thigh and knee. So in this case, of course, you go to higher concentration. Again, bigger veins require higher concentration. And we inject them uh, with the handmade foam, the one I showed you before, or we can inject them uh, with verathena, which is foam made with CO2 by a, a manufacturer. And we mix it in, uh, in the bottle in the office. Uh, she has been having leg pain, especially with standing. Uh, she had insufficiency in the great softness vein, which is on the inside of the leg that we ablated with radio frequency all the way from here to here now she has this big tributary we call it which is a branch of it that's still giving her uh, discomfort in the leg so it's extend from the mid thigh area all the way down to here so the treatment is going to be injecting this vein with medicine called verathena and verathena is a foam uh, that is uh, approved by FDA and was approved a couple of years ago. Uh, the advantage of it is that it's very effective but also does not leave much staining on the skin like uh, the old foam medications do. So this is Verathena that uh, manufactured by the company. Uh, we take foam from it as needed per patient. The advantage of it is that the bubbles are very tiny and small compared to a traditional foam which is handmade, uh, has variable size of bubbles which makes it a little bit less effective so you can see on the monitor over there where I'm injecting uh, where the bubbles the white bubbles are and I inject quite a bit and then Laura is gonna trace it and see the foam is moving uh, down it still uh, will be coming to the veins below so one injection could cover a large area. You can see the foam arriving there. And we wait for it a little longer. And then wherever it stops, we'll inject again. So you can see it coming in here, nicely closing the vein, making it spasm. And those big black spots become uh, tiny. So you can see that from where we injected, the vein cleared all the way down to here and I still see it here. So we will restart second injection here to see how long it will cover. The results are instantaneous, you see it right away. 
you can see the vein went away right away and we're going to keep watching this segment to see if it uh, clears up and you can see very slow clearance where the vein becomes white visibly wow it looks very nice you don't see anything anymore okay so that's an example of uh, foam takes me 10 minutes in the office and it solves the whole issue this vein needs to be stripped and can you imagine a surgeon stripping this vein how many cuts uh, it will take to, to do and scars and I've seen patients who had previous stripping and the scars are like two or three centimeter long all over the legs it's not a very pleasant sight all right uh, this is uh, I think the last video this is briefly uh, basically you can inject the way I showed you in the previous video is you inject directly in the vein with a needle this one you put an IV like butterfly and from one butterfly you elevate the leg to empty the vein I use this method when there is a big bulky vein because you want to empty them from blood completely by elevating the leg 30 degree 40 degree on a, a wedge and then you inject and in this case you inject very small amount because the vein has no blood it's collapsed and you'll have fantastic results okay without uh, significant incidence of pigmentations or uh, phlebitis okay which is a common complication so I'm not going to show this video because of uh, sake of time oh can you go back one slide okay so last slide side effects of uh, sclerotherapy should uh, be aware of it okay hyperpigmentation meaning there is brown pigmentation over the vein area it's cosmetic it's not really a medical problem but you can do aspiration of those veins because usually there's a clotted blood inside them i put a needle i aspirate the clotted blood we call the coagulum it's liquid and the vein improves instantly you can have phlebitis because some branches may not be ablated equally and some blood stays in them become uh, inflamed uh, telangiectatic matting means some uh, tiny little spiders form in the area of injection but they go away within a year if you leave them alone um, ulcers could happen and it happens if you inject in a small tiny artery that you don't realize you're injecting in could be next to a vein or if you inject too much in the tissue and the medicine necrosis the full thickness of the skin ulcers will require uh, a plastic surgery if they are more than one centimeter okay otherwise they don't heal because full thickness of the skin and will cause ugly star a scar if you leave them alone allergic reactions are very rare anaphylactic reaction but have epinephrine on hand in your office in case okay it's very rare now dvt is very rare one in two thousand or so usually below the knee and if you give them anticoagulant usually it resolves within days i don't know what it is about those dvts that one you know you're supposed to do ultrasound within three to five days after your procedure so you diagnose it very fresh and you give them one of the new anticoagulant and you repeat the ultrasound in a week it's gone okay i continue for six weeks in, you know total anyway but that's my own preference now last thing is visual disturbances the ias and cvas happen in people usually who have pfo patent foramen ovale and you don't know that they have it for that reason you have to do two things limit your foam volume to less than 11 cc per session that is a volume showed to be more safe than anything higher than that number two elevate the leg for about five to ten minutes after you finish injecting because the air will make the foam float in the leg not go back up to the heart so if you do those two things you minimize that effect and if the visual changes happen or tia almost always transient goes away within half an hour Thank you